All right, hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about public and private IP addresses. These are two categories of IP addresses with very different characteristics and it's a requirement that you know the difference between the two and then specifically we're going to look at some private IP addresses. You're going to have to know which ones are private and which ones are public just by looking at them. And it's pretty simple, you'll see in just a minute. So let's start and go over public IPs. Public IPs are assigned by ICANN and most people get them from their internet service provider. Some large companies actually petition themselves to get a block assigned to them. And these are unique IP addresses, usually a range, and they are routable over the internet. That is probably the most defining characteristic of a public IP. So if there's a website you know about, it has an IP address. If you can reach it over the internet, if that IP address can be routed over the internet, then it means it's a public IP. Private IPs, however, they're different in that they're not assigned by ICANN, so anyone can use them they are not routable over the internet. That's probably the most distinguishing characteristic of private IPs. Well, what does that mean? Really, it means that private IPs are used on private networks, and each private network can use the same private IPs. And that's okay, because since you can't route them over the internet, there's never any confusion. So they're local. You know, they're, they're locally significant, but globally, there's no significance at all. Private IPs are often referred to as RFC 1918 IP space. You'll probably hear that a lot in the workplace. That's where these networks were defined, so they're often called that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ranges of private IPs. So the network classes that we've learned about so far, the A, B, and C, each class has a range in it which is a private IP network. And so here we've listed each class and its private IP network range. These you'll have to know. You have to know um, just by looking at them that these are private IP networks. Um, it's a requirement for the certifications and private IPs are used often in the workplace. And we're going to go over a few reasons why in just a second. Um, oftentimes these private networks are subnetted to fit uh, the requirements of a particular network segment. Um, so they're used extensively. Um, please be familiar with these. Pause the video. Write these down, okay? Well, one of the reasons why we have private IPs is that we've talked about public IPs, IP version 4, uh, having limited space. And in fact, right now, it's been exhausted. All the IP version 4 IPs have been allocated. There are really none left. Well, quite a while ago, it was apparent that was going to happen very quickly, much sooner than it did happen. So the use of private IPs was introduced in order to alleviate the need for giving every single computer and router online a, a public IP, because oftentimes you don't need it. Now, this, this, this approach to conserving IP addresses um, was coupled with a, a concept known as NAT, or network, network Address Translation. And the two together actually worked really well to help conserve public IPs while being able to give IPs to everything else that didn't necessarily need a public IP. So we can illustrate the, the idea of using private IP addresses and public IP addresses and NAT all together really simply in this diagram. Let's say this is your company and you have a public IP address space and let's say you have 208.67.1.1. You can assign that IP address to your router, which then connects to the internet. However, on your, your network on the inside, you can use a private IP range. Let's say 10.0.0.0, and you've subnetted it. You've made it a slash 24. So each one of these PCs has an IP. That's dot one, that's dot two, the router dot three. So when each one of these needs to communicate on the network itself, it can reach all the other IPs, it can reach the router, you can have a bunch of other devices hanging off here, and they're using private IPs. You haven't, you, you haven't wasted using IPs. 
But yet when they need to go out to the internet, let's say to reach a website, what happens is the router itself will perform the network address translation. So it keeps track of the the inside IP address and then it converts it to this shared public IP address so that your traffic can route and then it routes back and then it'll go ahead and perform the translation again and keep track of who's going where so that these uh, PCs on the private network can perform just as if they had public IP addresses but they don't. And so the benefit here is your company really only needs a small block of IPs and yet they, they're not encumbered um, with you know, not having access to the rest of the world. Okay, so that's, that's the basic concept of private IPs and NATing. Don't get too caught up on the details of NAT for now. We cover that in detail in other tutorials. So to summarize what we covered, private IP address space, RFC 1918, you really just need to memorize those three network ranges. Keep in mind, private IPs are not routable over the internet, and one of the uses of private IPs is to conserve the use of public IPs. And that, combined with network address translation, successfully allows us to uh, be more efficient in our use of public IP address space. All right, so that's it. Those are the two categories, public IPs and private IPs. Thanks for watching.